Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we gather for worship this morning, now please uh, stand and hear those around you with the peace of the Lord. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. 
confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have yes. sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done by We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and we live, so that we may be glad in your will, and walk in your way, to the glory of your Lord and Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. For they are 
a rebellious house. And he said to me, Son of man, eat whatever you find here. Eat this scroll and go. Speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me this scroll to eat. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly with this scroll that I give you, and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate, and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. And at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity. But you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Said to me, 
take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We invite the children who are here this morning to please come forward at this time. Holy Gospel. According 
God told Ezekiel that his message would be heard by some and rejected by others. So the same is true of Jesus. So Jesus said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself, since he says, where I am going, you cannot come? He said to them, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge, but he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 159. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our sermon here.
Grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The two hymns we've sung this morning are probably not the most familiar hymns um, that uh, we sing, but both of them speak very strongly to the imagery and the message of our text. Uh, when we sing about heralds, we're more used to singing uh, the Christmas hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Those angels were heralds, messengers, watchmen, spokesmen. In our opening hymn, Herald, sound the note, sound the trumpet, sound the note of judgment, of gladness, of pardon, of triumph, whatever the message might be. Tell the message, Christ the Savior King is come. When I went to college and to seminary, one of the uh, common jobs for students was night guards, night security for various companies, even for the campus itself. It was a job that worked okay with studies because you could work at night and go to class during the day and then sleep whenever. But someone to guard, to be security, to keep an eye on things at night, it was important. Just as even sometimes those fire towers, the, the watchmen would stay all night and they could see through the night, through the darkness, then the light of a fire um, at night or the smoke by day. To be watching and to give a warning. In our text, Ezekiel was a watchman. It's what God calls him. We've moved over the last few days from reading Jeremiah, and Jeremiah was the prophet while Jerusalem still stood. And he was a, a watchman who warned the people, tried to call them to repentance, and they refused. And then we read the book of Lamentations. Jeremiah writes after the fall of Jerusalem, the destruction of the city and the temple, and, and the people carried off into Babylon, and, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah writes these words of lament. And now the people are in exile, and we come to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is called then to be the, the spokesperson to the people for God in Babylon. Ezekiel was supposed to be a priest. He was a priest by birth, but now there was no temple and thus no place to make sacrifices. And so God calls Ezekiel instead to be this prophet, specifically to be a watchman prophet. As prophet, he was to speak God's word. God would speak to him and he would relay that message to the people. And God gave him his word in a, a most special and visual way that he and the people might know that God's word was within him and coming out from him. God says to Ezekiel, eat the scroll of my word. Eat that scroll where my word is written. God's word literally filled Ezekiel's stomach. And Ezekiel says it was sweet, God's word in his stomach. He was full of God's word. And then he would speak that word. But also we're told, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 3, the first verse of our text, the Lord said to me, son of man, this is what he calls Ezekiel, stand on your feet, I will speak to you. And verse 3, I am sending you to the people of Israel, which is God's own people. But what does he call them? I'm sending you to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. And not only they and their fathers, but also their descendants are impotent, stubborn, rebellious. I'm sending you to them, to these rebels. Say to them, thus says 
the Lord. Speak my word. They will know that a prophet has been among them. One who speaks God's word. But Ezekiel was not just any prophet. He was a, a watchman prophet. A watchman prophet. Like one at the top of a tall tower who saw fire. The fire of sin. Who was called to speak to announce the rebelliousness of God's people. To point it out to them. How they were falling away. Even though they'd been carried off into Babylon. They still didn't get the point. They didn't get the message. Their hearts were not turned. And so Ezekiel is this watchman prophet. With a difficult message to say. And yet it's a loving message. God says speak to warn the wicked in order to save his life. Even though Ezekiel's message was often not well received, he was speaking in order to save, save the life, the spiritual life of those he spoke to, that lest they go to hell, lest they be damned for all eternity. Ezekiel speaks to them. And God says, speak faithfully, speak boldly. Their lives, their souls are at stake. Be not afraid of them. Don't worry about how they look or scowl or what they say. Just speak the word. Then the word is in their ears. They know the situation. And you will have carried out your responsibility. But if you lack courage, if you refuse to speak, Ezekiel, they still will die. But their blood will be on your hands, on your head. Ezekiel was this watchman, watchman prophet with a difficult message. Secondly, this morning, our text tells us not just that Ezekiel was a watchman, but our text tells us that we have that same role. For we have been given the same word of God. In fact, we've been given even more word of God than Ezekiel. The rest of the Old Testament, all of the New Testament, we have all that word. And we, we eat it. We inwardly digest it. We gather to hear it. Because of what it does for us and our lives. But also because it is a message to share. God's word comes to us. It is a sweet message. It came to us in the waters of baptism. It came to us when we first believed. It gave us the gift of faith. But at times that word is also to us bitter. It speaks the law to us in our lives. It points out our sins. But for our good, that we might repent, that we might be cleansed of those sins, that we might be forgiven. If those sins are not pointed out to us, if we're not aware of them, they're like a festering sore that eat away at us even to our death. But when we know of that, we have the remedy, we have the medicine that is sure, the power of God's word, his forgiveness to remove that stain, that sore, that disease from our lives. So we have God's word within us for ourselves, but also that we might be watchmen this good news is not just to keep to ourselves. It is to share. We are called like Ezekiel to be bold and to be faithful in speaking that word. And, and like Ezekiel, the truth is that not everyone will thank us for the message. Not everyone will be eager to hear. Our words will be rejected by those whose hearts are hard by those who have no time for the Lord. But nonetheless, that word has been given to us that we might share it, that we must share it, that we must speak. Even when it's not easy, even when that word, in a sense, becomes bitter within us, when we speak the law to those who need to hear the law. That's 
It's not a bad thing. It's not a mean thing. It's a thing of salvation. It's a means by which people are delivered. If your house was on fire, you'd want to be woken up in the middle of the night to know your house is on fire. Is it inconvenient? Of course. Is it bad news? Of course. But it's also saving news. News that rescues, news that needs to be told. We, at times, are telling people their house is on fire. Their spiritual house is on fire. Their souls are in danger of burning, literally. We are called to be faithful with all of God's word, law, and gospel. Yes, my friends, we too are watchmen. And God says to us, like he did to Ezekiel, be not afraid. As the sermon hymn said, some will receive it, some will not. Some will say, what of that? What difference does that make? But we are called not to produce results, not to force someone to believe, but just to share the word. Then it's up to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does his thing with that word as he wills. We're just called to faithfully speak and then leave that word in the ears of our hearers, family members, co-workers, neighbors, friends who need the word of the Lord. We are watchmen just like Ezekiel. And then finally this morning, the third part of our text, um, also this, that Jesus is our watchman. Yes, Jesus. We have a watchman. Jesus. Jesus who watches over your soul. Who watches over your life. Jesus who speaks to you. The word that is both bitter and sweet. Who speaks law and gospel. Who, yes, points out the sin in your life but also who speaks then the gospel of forgiveness as we repent of those sins, as we turn to the Lord. Jesus, he never slumbers nor sleeps as he watches over us. More faithful than any night security guard who might fall asleep on the task. More faithful than any person on a watchtower who gets tired of scanning the horizon for the sight of fire. Jesus never does. He is always watching, always caring, perfectly knows your heart, the condition of your soul, and cares about your salvation. That is your Jesus, your watchman. Even for the times when we fail to be watchmen for our neighbors, even then, as we come to the Lord in repentance, Jesus is there with his forgiveness, with his love, with his power, with his grace. Yes, Jesus, my friends. The Jesus who went to the cross. The Jesus who died for the sins of the world. He is your Savior. Your watchman. Your friend. The one who cares for you so greatly. Yes, my friends, that's the way it is. This fifth Sunday in Lent in the year of our Lord 2016. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We bring now our offerings to the Lord, and um, as that happens, if you would uh, find there's a red folder in your pew, if you would take that out and sign it and pass it to those who are seated next to you.
turn to the offertory on the bottom of page 159. What shall I render to the Lord? Please rise. Lord, 
and also watch over his family. And with Dale and Linda, with Linda and Geneva and Darlene and Iona, with Mary and Chuck, with Lois and Pat and Colleen and Lori, with Char, Kathleen, Janet, and Katie, with Rick, Virginia, Wayne, Diane, Bonnie, Aiden, Jackie, Lori, and all those, dear Lord, in any need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. <laughs>
As you uh, leave this morning, there's uh, coffee and goodies in the fellowship hall. Uh, please join us for that. Uh, today's the last day to order uh, flowers for Easter. Um, as of uh, the middle of the week, at least, we did not have any Easter lilies ordered. We had some other flowers ordered, but no Easter lilies. So we want some Easter lilies. And if you're so inclined, there's a, a slip on the counter, and then you can just leave that at the office or the door pocket outside of the office uh, today or tomorrow. Also at the counter is the science sheet for Easter breakfast, if you want to help uh, the kids with that. And there are some flyers there to invite people to our services for Holy Day, including next Sunday is our Friendship Sunday. I encourage you to think about who you might bring with you to worship next Sunday. We have some uh, fish magnets to uh, give to each family that comes, and uh, just encourage you to consider someone who might like to uh, to come, uh, to that you might be a watchman to and invite to to God's house. On Wednesday of this week, our final Wednesday Lenten service, if you're a Schwarzauer fan of soup, uh, come. And if you're not, uh, still come uh, for soup before, and we'll have some other soups as well. And then our final worship service and the last words of Jesus uh, from the cross. Also, if you uh, like uh, youth and speeches, tomorrow evening here, the speech team from the high school will have their friends and family night. There's a potluck at 7, or just come at 7.45, and there's a, there'll be a schedule, and uh, several of our own members are involved with that, and they'll be speaking in different rooms around the church, and you can choose the ones you want to hear, and uh, interesting and, and fun. Pray the Lord be with each of you, and keep you in his care this coming week. 